one ni anak kuda satu ang live selling no nate balik ya diri at t-shirt barato rin siya 150 maayog tela humok kaayo kung dili mo gusto t-shirt na punta diri ya sa mga hilig mag live video dira ah, nate ring light balik ya diri ah ha dili din ni live selling hulog ay stro manday ko nagklasin manday ko ah Subscribe na mga kacher for more videos related to art appreciation or teacher education subjects. And now, we are done with our lesson 1, 2, 3, and of course, karon 4 na ta! And now, before we'll proceed with our lesson number 4, let's have a game first. Are you familiar with word hunt? So, I have two words here na dapat ninyo pangitaon. Okay? Kung nakita ninyo, just comment sa comment section kung tama mo or dili. Ang pangutan, ang dam na ba mo? Ang dam na ba mo? Okay, okay. Ang dam naman mo. Without further ado, let's start the game. Nara, pangitaan mo yung dua ka word. Five, four, three, two, one. Ta-da! Okay, ang duha ka word na itong ginapangita kay ang... Unsa ka ha? Tama mo! Daligid mo mangitag mga sayot, no? Kaya ng mga word, no? Naigid mo. So, nara ang two words. We have... Okay, we have subject and content. Because you know what? Subject and content. Mauna siya tong i-discuss ka ron with lesson number, number four. That is why I know andam na mo. So without further ado, let's start. And now we have our lesson four, subject and content. Without further ado, let's start. So, I have here a graphic organizer for you to be able to what? Dali rin yun ni Balan kung unsa ang concepts on their subject, content, as well as form. So, we have actually three basic components of arts. The first one is subject. We also have content and form. So, these are the three basic components of art or arts. So when we talk about subject, it talks or it answers the question, what? When we talk about content, it answers the question, why? Nga no? And form, it answers the question, how? So sir, bakit walang under yung form? Because there's a separate um, lesson for form. That is why we will just focus on the subject as well as content. So, as what you can see, the subject, it has two. There are two types of subject. We have representational and non-representational. So, we will explain further later. So, we also have content. We have three, actually. We have factual, conventional, and subjective. And now, let's focus more on subject. So, subject refers to the visual focus or the image that may be extracted from the examining artwork. It is the what. So, it answers the question, what. So, when we talk about subject, it is the what. The focus of your, for example, the picture, the painting, and the like. So, we have here um, two photos on this side. So, what do you think the subject of the first one? This one? Uh-huh. I think you got it. So, it seems like it is a rice field, diba? Nga? Bago pagibungkal. Okay? Or some sort of a farm. 
So, pwede rin yan. That is the subject. And we also have this one. What do you think the subject of this one? Saan nakatuon yung focus ninyo? Sa bird, di ba? So, therefore, it is the subject of this painting. So, that is the nature of subject. So, napakadali. So, we have types of subject. So, the first type of subject is representational. So, these types of art have subjects that refer to objects or events occurring in the real world. So, what's the first letter is representational? R. And R stands for real world. Therefore, kung kasi makita niyo sa real world, then mo na siyang gigamit subject. Therefore, that is an example of representational subject. And other term of representational subject, it is, or other people call it as figurative art. Because as the name suggests, the figure depicts are easy to make out and decipher. So we have an example here. We have Mona Lisa. So, na example ko na to last time. Of course, it was done by Leonardo da Vinci. So therefore, sir, bakit si Mona Lisa representational eh hindi naman real personality talaga si Mona Lisa? No, because Mona Lisa, she is a female woman. And of course, woman exists in the real world. That is why Mona Lisa is the best example for representational. Ko ha? We also have this one. Garson Alapip. So, it is a boy with a pipe. So, it was created by Pablo Picasso. So, of course, it is representational because it represents boy. A boy. Di ba? And on the other hand, if we have representational, again, representational, it can be found in the real world, ha? Okay. So, like kaganina, na babae, na lalaki, makita naman as real world, those are representational. For example, nag-paint siya og chair, therefore it is, what? Representational kay available man sa real world ang chair. On the other hand, we have non-representational. You know what? Non-representational is malibog yuta if we compare it with what? With the abstract. Actually, pare-pareha sila. Because this non-representational, if in representational, it re depicts real world, kani, it cannot be seen in the real world. Because it does not make a reference to the real world, whether it is a person, place, thing, or even a particular event. That is why, kung naagani drawing at di imasabtan mo, yung din mga isa dyan tinga, ay, non-representational, abstract ni. Di ba? It is strip down to visual elements such as shapes. So, kadalasan talaga non-representational make use of shapes, lines, and colors that employ to translate a particular feeling, emotion, and even and even concept. Because with the use of shape, line, and colors, we can determine the emotion. Diba? For example, if some person draws a curved line, so it shows what? Flexibility. So, other depiction of curved line is, of course, unstable. Diba? And when we talk about colors, usually yung mga dark colors is usually sad emotion yon, As compared to the bright colors which depicts happiness. So, we have here an artwork by Jackson Pollock. So, as we can see, diba, it doesn't represent any from the real world. So, it is what it is known for action or Jackson Pollock by the way is known for action paintings so as you could see on his paint diba nakikita talaga natin that it doesn't represent anything therefore it is non-representational we also have this one side view of the impasto of joyas Grenadian oh wait so as you could see, diba, it doesn't represent anything. Diba? That is why it is non-representational art. And 
And you know what? Sometimes non-representational art and abstract art are the same, but not all the time. Because one source of confusion and the notion that non-representational art is the same as abstract. Yes, it could be true, but let's see. This is essential to discuss because it introduces the fact that representational art and non-representational art is not clear-cut divide. Rather, they exist in a spectrum. Actually, it is true because sometimes there are non-representational art wherein makita na to nga, uy, makita man is a real world, bakit non-representational art ang iyahang kuan ani, iyahang subject taraw. And the best example of this one is the artwork of Pablo Picasso. We have this one, the head of a woman. So when we talk about woman, it exists in real world. But what man tayo makita nga ingon aning head sa real world, di ba? So therefore, there is a confusion between representational and non-representational art. But of course, in general, always remember that representational represents real world and non-representational, it doesn't represent real world. And we also have abstract art. So other than the expe spectrum of representational and non-representational, here comes the abstract. Diba usually mo na itong iingon basta di na ito masabtan ang drawing? Hala, abstract ni, abstract ni, matakasabot ah ni. Hey. So, it is departure from reality, the same with non-representational. But the extent of the departure determines whether it has reached the end of the spectrum, which is, of course, non-representational art showcases. So, we have other examples of non-representational art. Okay, we have this one. So, therefore, it is not necessarily that when we talk about non-representational art, tanan talaga is abstract. Okay? Yes, they do meet at certain point, but not true to all. So, it depends upon on the book kung sa inyo hang serve as basis. But most of the non-representational art are abstract. So, we have this one. Okay. So, we have sources and cut and kinds of subject. So, I know, di ba, we mentioned on the previous topic that art is an imitation. We tend to depict what is happening in reality in different art forms, like for example, a film, painting, visual arts, rather. We also have theater, performance art, music, as well as um, dance. But you know what? As an artist, here are what could be your source in, of course, choosing your subject. So we have this one. It could be nature. It could be history. Diba? Usually, ang mga estudyante, the main source of their subject is nature. During the Okahoy Bukid Char. We also have history. Like, for example, the what? The in the Luneta part, the Rizal Monument, the Greek and Roman mythology, or kisig gabasa ane, and Jodio Christian tradition, sacred Oriental texts, and other works of art. So therefore, as what I have said, broad talaga yung spectrum ng source ng art. That is why we could really get kung unsa man ato ang gusto ng mahimo source of our subject. And of course, the kinds of subjects, so it doesn't end with this, ha, kaning na adiria, but dagan pag yun, may need to mention. So these are just few of the kinds of subjects. So history, still life, animals, figures, natures, landscapes, seascapes, cityscapes, mythology, dreams, and fantasy. So these are just few, ha. So I am just giving you a hint. If ever, I will um, let you draw something or paint something. At least, alam nyo kung ano yung gagawin nyo yung subject. Diba? Okay. So, I'll just forward this one. So, you know what? I on already, I, I only discuss things that are essential in our subject. 
mga importante lang talaga. So by the way, this showcases what? The sources of subject. Okay, nakita nyo na. Okay, di ba? And now let's proceed to the content in art. So when we talk about content, if subject it talks about what content it talks about why bakit pangit ba ako kapalit palit ba ako then why charot the meaning that is communicated by the artist or the artwork you know what sometimes labi na muta natin ako ng painting isa pa lang kakita din mo sa painting di ba na nakai ma feel although one painting or one picture it tells a thousand words We do our ha- we do our own, or we do have our own subjective um, meaning of that certain artwork. That is why we have three types of meaning or levels of meaning. First is factual meaning. Later, I will give you example. This pertains to the most rudimentary level of meaning. For it may be extracted from the unidentifiable or recognizable forms in the artwork and understanding how these elements relate to one another. So, it focuses more on facts. So, more on knowledge lang ni siya. Knowledge level. So, more on facts lang siya. Later on, I'll show you example. Conventional meaning it pertains to the acknowledged interpretation of the artwork using motifs, yung mga symbolisms, yung ciphers as basis of its meaning that is conventional. Again, factual based on facts of the artwork, conventional based on the techniques na ginamit, yung mga symbolisms na inilagay. And of course, subjective meaning, it is when, or it is a variety of meaning wherein it arises when a particular work of art is read. So, depende sa mga audience or sa mga bumabasa, not literally bumabasa, but who are what interpreting the meaning of a certain artwork. Because these meanings stem from the viewers or audience's circumstances that come into play when engaging with art. With art rather. What we know what we learned, what we experience, what values we stand for. Therefore, subjective meaning, it depends upon on us. Again, when we talk about factual meaning based on facts of the artwork, conventional meaning based on motifs, symbols, based on techniques na ginamit, and subjective meaning based on your own interpretation of the artwork. That is why it is stated there that Here, rather, that meaning may not be singular because you know what? At some point, at some angle, ito yung interpretation mo. But there are a lot of angles when it comes to artworks, particularly painting. That is why it is multiple and varied. So, one, so I have here an example, Michelangelo, creation of Adam from the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. So, of course, for the factual perspective of this artwork, it is Michelangelo depicted a scene from a creation story. So, therefore, the factual meaning of this one is it is based on creation story. Okay, apart from being a key element of Michelangelo's fresco at the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, the subject matter suggests that this is an example of biblical art so therefore the factual meaning of this one is it is a creation of man focuses on creation and of course it is based on biblical art that is why the subject subject ito a biblical art the factual is or factual meaning is creation story the creation of man and what do you think the conventional Man was created in the image and likeness of God. Because as you could see in the picture, you could really see that the two have the same physical features. Diba? If you are going to zoom, zoom natin, diba? the two have 
the same physical features. They, the two have eyes, nose, mouth, and the like. Ayaw ninyo napansin ng, ng gamay dira, aha? Kawalo ko, kana inyong gitanaw. Di ita sa subtitle magtanaw. Charot lang. Okay, so that is the conventional meaning based on the symbolism na makikita natin. Ano pang symbolism nila dito? Oh, marami pang symbolism. So it depends upon on you. And of course, subjective meaning. So we have endowment of intellect to man from God. That is, of course, your own personal meaning. So actually, marami kang personal meaning na mapapakita mo dito. Okay, so what are the other meanings that you could give based on this painting? So kindly comment down below if you love. So babasahin ko kung for you, what do you think the subjective meaning of this artwork? And lastly, we have form. The development and configuration of artwork, how the elements and the medium or material are put together. It is the how. Or other term for this one is, of course, these are the what? Elements of art. So later on, we will just discuss this one on our next topic. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's quite mahaba. But I really want to make this, what do we call this one, an interactive one. Tipo ba? That is why credits the um, students who created this PowerPoint presentation or Sinado Nowhere Give Why. So I really love your PowerPoint presentation. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, uh, you put, you like put. And of course, for more videos related to art appreciation, don't forget to subscribe on my channel. And this is your Pogging Instructor, Mark Jan M. Martinez.